Who wants to kick off down here? We've got Mark, Mark from the Sun. We felt the last since the World Cup, we've really been playing one game a week. I mean, from next week, really, you're going to be playing two games a week, pretty much to the end of the season. How much does that change the dynamic, and how much did it change your job playing every sort of two or three days? Well, a lot, because we're going to have much less time to train and, and to recover. So I'm sure we're going to have to share more minutes um, around the squad, uh, which is great because we're going to have uh, to give opportunities to everybody, new competitions coming up as well, so really nice. But obviously, I mean, there's going to be a lot of travelling as well, involved as well. Mm -hmm. People are almost going to start thinking, Arsenal fans might say, well, let's just concentrate on the league title, but presumably you're not going to be sacking off the Europa League in there. I don't know. We will try to put all the time the, the team that we believe is the best to win on the day. Because if you do something different, they will say, "But well, why we pick this team?" And then you didn't win in the Europa League, you know. So you're never gonna win that battle. We're gonna put the team and the players that are in the best possible condition to win actually the game. Because it's really important to win that game to be in a better condition to win the next one. And that's what I, I would try to do with the team. I just, I'm just very briefly on Sam Bakayo. I'm surprised he's. I mean, I think he's played about God knows how many games in a row. He seems to play every week. Are you surprised that he's actually managed to play, come back every week, play 50 games, whatever it is? No, because I really see his determination and where he wants to get. And, um, and we have discussed that a lot, um, individual talks with him, and he really wants to get there, and he wants to have that resilience um, and that capacity to constantly show a certain level and always be available. And then, yeah, he has a great physical uh, elements to be able to do that every three days. And um, hopefully he can continue to do that. Yeah. Dan? OK, I'll um, slightly change the subject. Ask you about Bakayo, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can you just give us an idea? Of, obviously, there's all the noise about how he's treated by referees and opposition. Can you give us an idea of how he perceives it and how he reacts behind closed doors? Like, does he bring it up with you? Is he concerned about it? I think the word I would use is normality. I think he's used to it, as I said before, since he was 10, 11, 12 years, because that's the game that that he plays. And um, I don't see like like he's concerned at all. It's, um, it's a challenge that he's going to have face with every opponent in front of him, and uh, and he wants to win that challenge. That's it. And all throughout the season, you've kind of set... Him, what feels like you've kind of set him challenges to play like 70 games a season to try and kind of be like the best players in the world. And we saw a reaction last week when he was tackled by Philippe Coutinho, which perhaps <coughs> isn't what we'd normally associate with Bakayo, the reaction. Has he kind of met those challenges in kind of developing menta his mentality that you've been setting him this season? Well, the first one that has to protect Bakayo is himself. And there's many ways to do that on a football pitch um, within the rules. Um, and he needs to learn and needs to improve that. The other way he reacted in a way, but that line is extremely thin and he, that cannot take him out of his game and, uh, and lose the focus. But he can help that as well to have more focus, more determination and, and more belief for the next action. So it's something that he needs to do. Nick, another topic? I will change the subject um, a bit. Um, you've had um, 13 different goal scorers this season in the league, which is more than anyone else in the top flight, I think. How, 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 how healthy is that, spreading the goals around in terms of maintaining a challenge? And also, I, I, um, I think you talked um, maybe last season about needing to, to sort of spread things out like that mm -hmm. and bridge the gap of goal scoring you know, to the top clubs. How, how pleased are you with that and have you done it as well? well very pleased because uh, at the end of the day you're going to have to score a certain amount of goals or clean sheet if you want to be at the top and if you don't have a player who scores 30 goals in the league I'm sure that uh, somehow we have to find them and, um, and we have to try to to elevate the level and, and the influence of a lot of players in and around the box in the final third or in set plays and we have to continue to do that especially from our our midfield areas and, and our back line and to add more goals because it's going to be crucial every single goal that they can contribute with with, with the threat that we have in the front line to, to be up there. Is it healthier to have that diverse goal scoring threat than to maybe have, I don't know, one, one striker who scored 26 or, or something like that? Both. Yeah. Okay. Ideally you have both and <laughs> then you are on fire. Can I ask one more about striker? So, um, Eddie Nketiah, um, Obviously, we know what he brings to the team. Maybe the last few games, it's not quite gone for him in, in front of goal. Normally, he's such a poacher. Have you had, had to talk to him and reassure him that you know it's all going fine? 
It is because you were creating the chances and, and he's at the end of those chances and um, and he knows that he could have put away and, and that's his biggest quality to put chances away. It hasn't happened, but that happens to any striker in the world. So, I just ask about um, Franny. And obviously he scored, I think, four goals in the first 15 games and mm -hmm. hasn't scored since and maybe not quite contributing in the same way he was in the first part of the season. What's, what's changed, do you think? Well, it's a, it's a good question. It's um, certainly we looked at that and how many times he's arriving in the box and the moments that he's arriving in the box, um, the kind of delivery he got when he got into those positions, and um, and he could have much better service um, in many occasions when when he was in those positions. But certainly uh, to maintain our level, we need goals from midfield, and and that's a big target for us. With the way that position has changed in, in the team, <coughs> is that now where you see Emil sort of competing? alongside Granite rather than left wing staying wide? He can do a bit of both, to be fair, depending on, on the game plan, depending on the couples and the units that we use in, in that left side. Uh, but yeah, you ask me, Emil, where I see him <laughs> like really contributing at his best from his in, in the attacking midfield position. Darren, you may um, I just wanted to talk about um, support, really. Um, during difficult times, <coughs> you've got a lot of support from the club. Brendan had it as well at uh, Leicester as well um, and I just wonder if particularly in this current environment of social media and all of the outside pressures um, whether it's even more of a commodity now an important commodity during these difficult moments and, and where, 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 where the club sees what you're trying to do even though the results are bad and all of the noise from the outside is difficult to take as well well, extremely important. Obviously, the people you work with, um, they need to have faith. But at the same time, they have to see every day what you do. And I think it's uh, it's something that works um, very close together. And um, I was lucky to, to have the people and the ownership and, and the board that that we have. And, um, and they believe that uh, we could continue to the work that we wanted to do, that that work needed time. And, um, and hopefully we can pay that faith back. Jorginho scored the other day, as you, might, you talked about him earlier. Um, every time you miss out on a player, you seem to bring one in that's a better fit for the team. Um, do you think that is that maybe some of the players who've missed out, who've not chosen not to come, or who they go kind of look at what is happening at Arsenal, maybe miss out, they consider themselves maybe you have missed the boat. Well, I don't know what they would be thinking, uh, those players, but I'm certainly really happy with the players that uh, that we have, the players that we have recruited, um, and and especially with, with I think, where we can take this group and these players individually to, to a different level, and, and this is the aim of, of the coaching the staff and, and the club. And finally, we'll go to James. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Can I ask you about uh, Fabio Vieira, because he had quite a slow <coughs> introduction to English football, but he's speak true for you. A lot more regularly now. I think he's come on in the last four Premier League games. What's your assessment of where he is in his adaptation at this point in time? Very close. He's started to give me big headaches because I see him every single day. What he's capable of doing, um, a tremendous player um, that now understands exactly what we want. I think now physically is in the conditions to to compete at the right level in in this league, and it brings qualities that we don't have in the squad. So. Very eager to give him more. Uh, and because of his size, I think the physicality is always going to be a thing that's questioned about him. Mm. He's been playing a sort of a midfield role for you in recent mm. games. Do you think that he can live with that and cope with that in the Premier League? Yeah. If he needs to compete to th with 30 balls in the air against certain players in the league, I think he's going to lose 28. Uh, but if we give him the right spaces, the ball, and uh, we ask him to do some defensive work that he can do, and if we put him in front of goal, the, the amount of time that we want to do, I think he will do really well in this league. But if we do the opposite, I don't think he's going to do well in the league. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck.